That's a conspiracy theory of the highest degree. This is kind of a smaller part of a larger narrative that I see very often in the West of this is a completely ridiculous line of logic. As far as I can see, there's, there's nothing uh, about politics in this, from China's side at least. Economic damage of the virus rising. A law firm from Florida is suing China. A twenty for trillion dollar lawsuit has been filed against Chinese authorities. China has been sued for twenty trillion dollars worth of damages. Twenty trillion. Yeah. So I think that these lawsuits are just adding insult to injury, which is that we already know China's been through a very rough time with the outbreak, and to not even wait until it's healed and just add in these obviously bogus lawsuits is just a way of insulting China. The information that they have is not correct. I think that they're basing a lot of their information on faulty news reports and a lot of bias from people who have um, a tendency to ignore facts and try to push a narrative. It's clear by the actual facts that we have that China has done a much better um, job at dealing with this outbreak than they ever have before, and much better than most or all other countries. And so it's not fair to say, well, it wasn't done perfectly, and so therefore you owe the whole world a bunch of money. If somehow it did go through, then it would be a, 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 a very strange precedence for the future, because now anytime anything happens, the rest of the world can jump on that country and attack them. If it's an earthquake that somehow damages trade, or it's an outbreak, or it's a war between two nations that somehow affects some other country, you get into this very weird situation where everyone can just exchange blame and exchange blame. So instead of working together, it's actually slowly taking the world apart. It's the type of thing where if you really thought that China altogether was responsible for something, this is not how you would actually go about trying to solve that problem. You wouldn't just have companies and groups of people you know, doing these lawsuits. That's not a real way to solve any problem. So this is just a virtue signal so that they can show people that they're standing up to you know, what their small group of people thinks is an enemy. Um, this idea that China knew that the world was going to need masks. And so what they did is, rather than use their own masks, they sucked up all the masks in the entire world and so that they could sell them back, which is, that's a conspiracy theory of the highest degree. But when you look at the actual details, the facts that we know, China was going through an extreme shortage of supplies through around January and February, and they were asking everyone to help find supplies and they were willing to pay for them. It's not like they were stealing them, they were paying for products. And in that time, the entire world already knew so many things about this outbreak, that it was highly contagious. It was in 24 countries and more. This is kind of a smaller part of a larger narrative that I see very often in the West of this unfair trade concept where people trade with a country and then complain about the deal that they're getting instead of just making the product themselves or going with another country. It's really just a negotiation tactic. This is a completely ridiculous line of logic because it, number one, requires that, that China had intent to do this. It has the requirement that China is maliciously trying to do this, which are two things that are very hard to prove. And it gets very conspiratorial and very complicated. Or the other, the other option is China just needed supplies and so they paid for them and got them. And now that China doesn't need as many supplies, they can sell them. It's just the simple concept of, of trade. Mask diplomacy, the phrase, doesn't exactly sound good or bad. It just makes you wonder, hmm, what is that? But of course, what they're sort of trying to insinuate is that China is using 
medical supplies as chips on a board to manipulate the the game and change allies and you know like it's a like it's a board game like it's not real life but as far as i can tell from the evidence i've seen china went through a vacuum of no materials and no supplies and they really tried everything that they could do to get as much mass and anything that they could to these medical workers and now china has a surplus and it's ready to distribute as needed and they've been doing it at very low cost and they've been doing it to anyone who asks so um, if you call that diplomacy i just call it capitalism i don't even know why that would have anything to do with countries this is a very strange argument that i've seen in which people who live in an extremely capitalistic society attack countries for participating in capitalism but they can't say that so they just change the wording and say oh well you're just trading things for other reasons but of course that just defeats the entire argument for capitalism in the first place which is that the market demands are where supplies will travel and if there's a country that needs masks China and other countries can help provide those masks. That's it. As far as I can see, there's, there's nothing uh, about politics in this, from China's side at least.